As all of you are very well aware of, everyone loves to blame the Wi-Fi when things aren't working right. Um, and I got a kind of a crazy example of that that just happened on my flight down here uh, for this conference. I flew in from Salt Lake City. It's like an hour, you know, hour and 20 minute maybe flight. Um, and about an hour into it, uh, we get the pilot comes on the, the intercom and announces that um, we're going to be late in arriving to Phoenix. Uh, it's going to be at least another hour. And he said it's because of the Wi-Fi. Um, uh, apparently, the, the Wi-Fi on the plane was so slow that it was creating drag and actually slowing the plane down <laughs> in the air. Um, and I'm a CWNE, and I had no idea that airtime contention can cause that problem. But uh, we've all gotten really good at, um, at saying, no, it's not the Wi-Fi. We've got stickers, T-shirts that say that. Um, and because a lot of times it's not the Wi-Fi, but sometimes um, it is. And so what I want to share today are ways uh, in which we can create our own uh, and even self-host our own uh, tools and dashboards that can provide us very quick, um, at-a-glance information about our network so that we can see is, is it the Wi-Fi or, or not. Um, so self-hosting applications, um, you see here there's this big hole in the ground. I want to just warn everybody, if you're anything like me, as soon as you get into self-hosting your own applications on your own server, it's a rabbit hole. Uh, there's so many really amazing, um, useful tools that you can self-host uh, that as soon as you have two or three that you're hosting, you're going to want to know what, well, what's, what's next. Let's keep these coming. Um, so self-hosting um, means you know, running applications, again, on your own server. And these can be internal-only um, applications where they're only accessible from your home network, uh, or they can be external tools that you can tie to a custom uh, domain name and then access these tools from you know, any device, wherever you are. Um, and you can see here, there, there's a, a lot of, of categories of, of applications, media servers, you know, file servers, NAS, you know, low code. I mean, there's just a ton of different applications you can use. Let me just show a few examples of, of some of the applications that I'm self-hosting. This first one here is my blog website, you know, wififood.com. This is a WordPress website. I'm hosting this on my own server, so I don't pay anyone to, to host my domain. Um, uh, WordPress is, is open source, so if you're hosting it yourself, you're not paying uh, for the website. Um, you still have access to all of the, the plugins that you get with WordPress, which makes it um, so popular. Uh, the next one here is um, a site that my son and I worked on. I actually presented this. It's, it's a Meraki Wi-Fi app. I presented this last year in a Spotlight 10 talk here at WLPC. I'm hosting this on my, my own server at home. Um, next one, you guys can't, probably can't see the URL at the top. It's up tods.app. So tods.app is my custom domain that I use that I tie a lot of the self-hosted um, applications that I use. I tie to that domain so I can access those, those tools from wherever. So this, this particular application is called Uptime Kuma. It monitors the status of uh, my websites and different network devices. Uh, next one here is uh, tools.tods.app. Um, and again, this just has a bunch of tools that I found useful that I want to be able to access wherever I'm at when I need them. Um, and then I've got this one here, notes.tods.app. Um, this is where I keep all of my notes. And it's great to have this available um, you know, via URL, because that way I can always easily access those notes, look, look things up, and then add to them along the way. All right. So uh, again, there are a lot of different types of applications that um, you can self-host on your own server. Um, but in the event that you need some functionality that you just can't find in an existing application, 
one of the nice things is that you can, there's applications that you can host um, that allow you to build them yourself. Um, so I'm gonna go over one that I built, it's a dashboard. I used an application called Retool, it's a low code um, development platform. And I'm using it to interact with uh, the Meraki dashboard API to pull information from my Meraki networks into um, a dashboard that I've created. And, and there's a lot of different, uh, you know, visualization applications that you can use. A lot of you, we've heard talk this week about Grafana. That's a very popular one. Um, I'm going to use one that's just built into this retool application. So live demo time. I hope this, this works. Okay, here we go. So first off, I'm going to select the organization that I want to check on. Let's do this. All right, so right away, we've got every network in that organization. We can see how many APs the network has, how many of those APs are online, how many clients are connected to the Wi-Fi. We can see the average packet loss on the upstream and downstream for that network. You can see the utilization, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, average utilization on that network, and then what firmware they're on. And then if you click on one of these networks, uh, you can actually drill into that network and get some more information. So down here, again, now we're looking at each AP within a network. Uh, you can see status. Apparently, there's a couple of these APs are mesh. Now, I know these aren't supposed to be mesh APs. Um, so what that tells me is that there's a problem with the cable. It's getting power, but it's not getting data. And so those Meraki APs are functioning as mesh APs. Um, you've got the model, you've got the channel, 2.4 and 5 gig channel, you've got the transit power levels for 2.4 and 5, you've got uh, some AP health information, again, channel utilization on 2.4 and 5 for each AP, different connectivity issues, different failures um, that can occur on clients, uh, and then you've got average latency uh, for the AP over the last four minutes. Um, and see, so these are things that just can qu help you quickly identify, is this really the Wi-Fi or something else? And the nice thing about using a tool like this um, and getting information from uh, a vendor API is you could create and put in here whatever you guys want. So if you wanted to add something like, well, what's the, the, the jitter and the latency of the WAN uplink, you know, you can add that to the dashboard. Um, you can add additional insights to help you, again, understand, hey, is this the Wi-Fi or is it something else? Um, let me hop back over to presentation. Okay. Um, and then finally, you know, to host your own applications, um, you need to have a server that you manage. Um, it could be a physical server that you have at your workspace or your home lab. I'm sure a lot of you in here, probably most of you have home labs that you use, that you test things out on, that's where my servers are. Uh, or you can use a cloud um, server. Uh, it's helpful to have a, a virtual environment. I use one called Proxmox where I spin up some VMs um, and I have my applications on those VMs. And, and that way, whenever I screw something up, which I've done, I can't tell you how many times and when I deploy these different applications and test things out, it's just so easy and convenient to just restore a previous backed up VM uh, that's functional. Um, there's also, every, every one of these applications um, runs in a container. And so it's great to have a container manager. I use one called Portainer. Um, it's just web-based UI, uh, so that way you can manage it in the web versus manage it in command line. Um, and then finally, again, you're going to, it's nice to have a custom domain name that you can tie these applications to so that you can then access them from wherever you are. Um, I'm in the process right now of adding, you know, posts on my blog that go into a lot more detail on setting up your home server um, and the soft, installing the software, using the software, finding the applications. So if this interests you, um, head over to my blog at wififu.com. Again, I'm in the process of adding more posts that go into a lot more detail, or you can reach out to me and I'm happy to explain uh, any of this um, via email, phone call, whatever. Thank you.